covering the Northern Bahamas? You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. The Bahamas Public Services Union investing in the younger members this afternoon, hosting their first youth forum aimed at empowerment. President Kimsley Ferguson says the goal is to equip the younger members with the necessary knowledge to build a stronger union for tomorrow. The information was something that uh, every young worker left empowered to go into the workplace and actually make a difference. They got a great understanding of what their rights were and what the benefits and privileges are with regards to joining the union and where these um, tools can literally take them in the workplace. And so we were really happy in that regard. Youth Arm Chairperson Latoya Cartwright and Executive Vice President O'Neill Thurston say it was a very exciting day as the young people were engaged and interacting with the various presenters. Over the past year, some of our members, especially the young workers we call them, feel disenfranchised, felt as though that their voice is not being heard. So this forum was a time and a place that they could come listen to information, gather up their thoughts, and also ask questions and be more knowledgeable of the union. I was very excited about what I saw here today. The workers then were re-energized. They were, they, were, they were given a new charge um, to go back in the workplace and to, they, really be, they were really educated on what their rights are as young workers. For so, for, for more time, for so many times you've seen young workers who are being disenfranchised because they don't know their rights. And so today we, 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 sort of to, we sort of expand on training, education, and the development as it relates to um, behavioral patterns in the workplace, uh, knowing your rights and what's not like that. And so we, we, we want to share with the young workers today that um, unions are more than just getting out there and fighting, but it's about education, training, and development. And now to the second installment in our Fresh Start series, a program designed to give youngsters valuable life lessons and hands-on experience. Tonight, we'll meet two brothers who are calling it an eye-opening experience. They credit the program with giving them new skills that they never even considered. They are partly responsible for ensuring that communities are kept clean and pristine. And oftentimes, persons don't fully understand the scope of work done by sanitation services. That was the case of two brothers, Ashton and Austin Tickinson. The pair worked as interns, a part of the Fresh Start program. They say it has been an eye-opening experience. This right there is a very smooth operation. You know, when you think about sanitation, you don't think about this side of the, this side of the job, you just think about the cutting the grass and the lawn field. You don't think that they have these mechanics around here 24 7 working and serving these trucks if they break down and you know checking all, make sure all the oil and the press is right so that they could do their job properly. When I came here, they saying, Well, you can be an apprentice to be a diesel mechanic. So I was like, a Diesel mechanic? I don't know mechanics. All I know is, um, come with sanitation, you cut grass, pick up trash, but I learned a lot that this place have more than just picking up trash and cutting grass. You do from like welding, um, diesel mechanic, being a tire man, um, fixing them, um, loading up the tires, and a lot. The Dickinson brothers say they had great mentors in various departments that gave them lasting lessons and hands-on experience. So far, my biggest highlight was changing the starter in the truck. Yeah, it's, it's nothing good, but it's, I mean, there's no other feeling but getting in the engine, you know, getting in the tight spaces and screwing and loosening bolts, man. There's no great satisfaction in saying, well, I take apart this truck and I put it back together brand new with clean engine, you know, spraying it, looking beautiful like how them uh, parts is right there, we did that. So when we put it back together inside the truck and the truck running brand new, I can say that well, I did this to this truck. Maintenance manager at Sanitation Services, Felix Bright, says he wants the young men to leave with a new outlook as they consider their future career paths. They came in with the mindset of more or less going into their own businesses per se. As a matter of fact, coming in, they said to me that they were in a general maintenance mode, more or less geared for a hotel. 
But in coming in and experiencing what we have here, speaking with me and also my boss, Luke Carroll, uh, I think it's broadened their perspective of the things that they may want to do. Also trying to enlighten them of what jobs may be best for them to do on this island. Megan Shepard, ZNS Network News. The Grand Bahama Children's Home preparing to host one of its major fundraisers once again, the second annual Spring Bazaar and Market this weekend. Executive Director Sheila Johnson-Smith says that with almost 30 children currently at the home, any and all assistance will be greatly appreciated and welcomed. The Spring Bazaar will kick off bright and early at 8.30 a.m. and will run until 3 p.m. on the grounds of the home. We're having over almost 40 vendors who are coming in to sell clothing, they're selling accessories, there's lots of food, milks and curb salad, we're having people who are doing grills and daiquiris and so forth. We have the rotary van is coming, Kiwanis is coming, and so the home will be teeming with excitement on the 17th. And so this is one of our fundraisers for the year. We're asking the public to support the Grand Bahama children. So we need to remain open. When you have almost 30 children and your average is between 28 and 35 children, you know we need help. It is not an easy job. The bazaar is the biggest fundraiser for the children's home and it is operated at a cost of some $500,000 every year. And so now it is time to ask the doctor. And welcome. Eli asks, I know that we are supposed to wash our hands regularly, but why is this so important? Is it better to use an antibacterial soap? Thank you for such an important question, Eli. As you touch people, objects, and different surfaces each day, the amount of germs on your hands accumulate. If you touch your eyes, nose, and mouth, this can lead to you infecting yourself and others. So frequent hand washing can help you to reduce the amount of bacteria, viruses, and other microbes that can be transferred. This prevents you from diseases such as colds, the flu, and food poisoning. You should always wash your hands before preparing or eating food, treating wounds or caring for anyone who is sick or injured, and inserting or removing contact lenses. And you should always wash your hands after using the bathroom or changing a diaper, touching an animal leashes or waste, blowing your nose, coughing or sneezing into your hands, handling garbage, and shaking hands with others. When washing your hands, it is important to use warm water and soap. Even though it seems that everything is antibacterial these days, contrary to belief, recent studies have shown that using antibacterial soap is not more effective at killing diseases than regular soap and water is. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt, and this has been Ask the Doctor. Don't go away, Ricardo Lightborn is up next with a check on sports. 